Hey everybody, this is Kasu and welcome to a Power of Titan showcase and today it is the Mirigaya. Uh, if, if you guys didn't know, they posted it like I think two days ago in uh, their Instagram and whatever social media that uh, they have. Uh, they Eldoran posted that Calm down. Eldoran posted that oh they're gonna be releasing a new dinosaur soon. And usually when this happens it's like maybe a week or so afterwards then they release. No, they just release it today. So I'm just gonna go through everything what everything the Mirigaya has and I already seen all of the abilities and let me tell you, it's a bit stupid <laughs> in terms of holy hell this guy is probably gonna be a problem to a lot of players. But without further ado, let's begin with first off the male and female variant. So this is how the male looks like, like so. A darker color I guess. And this is how the female looks like. Not much of a difference, just a slightly brighter color. Then let's look at this uh, subspecies. First up is the first up is the longer column, which gives you ten percent stamina recovery. Next one is the longer spinous, which gives you twenty percent spike damage. And last one is the lamina laminam lata, which gives you ten percent health increase. So depending on your playstyle, just go for whichever subspecies you think is the best, but I will be taking the spike damage instead. And I shall name you Porcupine. For the colors wise, uh, I'm just gonna let you, let all of you do your own creative freedom on what you think is the best color and so on and so forth. Anyways, let's create this creature and spawn in the world, not you. So what does this guy have? Well, first up, uh, let's change the weather because I need the weather to be not raining. Okay. Yes, it's not raining anymore. Good. Uh, so, first things first, let's take a look at all of his uh, calls and stuff like that. That's all of the vocal calls. Let me get back on my UI. Now, uh, let's look at all of his skins. Right, so I'm going to be just shutting up and showing you all of the different patterns.
And for the albino and melanistic, uh, that's you know just black and white, not really much changes. Very minor changes that you can hardly see. So let's uh we're we'll skipping those and let's go on to the abilities. Abilities. This is probably the first creature from my knowledge that has a passive that is already built inside the creature itself. So when you spawn in as a Mirigaya, I'm not sure about the levels and stuff. But uh, more likely or not, you already unlock this passive. I didn't have to spend anything. It's similar to like the metabolism and the tail. I don't have to spend anything. You are, in a sense, born with this passive. So paralysis. Attacking Mirigaya, Miragaya applies paralysis, which increases ability cooldown up to 40% and reduces speed up to 20%. At full paralysis, attackers will be briefly paralyzed. This is probably the first time we see such an interesting ability in the game itself that makes it much more like an RPG, which I don't mind. I like realism, but I also like a bit of fantasy inside it. And this ability, it's quite bastard from my knowledge because, you know, it seems dumb that you give a creature ability that will make someone stop in their path and also increase ability cooldowns and stuff like that. And again, just to take note, this is automatically unlocked for all Miragaya players. Next up is the hit, which is Spit. Spit, the description is Spit on all enemies within 5 meters to weaken their attack damage by 15% for 25 seconds. Stacks up to 2 times, so a total, a total of 30% uh, for 25 seconds. If enemy reaches 2 stacks of Spit on them, they will become immune to any further Spit for 5 minutes. So from my understanding, the most effective way to use speed is to actually uh, just delay it and keep the speed at a one stack. Because in the, uh, with this method, the enemies will always have 15% damage reduction on you. Yes, it just means that you're not you know, receiving the full 30% damage reduction. However, if throughout the entire fight, I can receive 15% damage less from literally my opponent or any other creature, it will surely help me out a lot in the fight. Next up is Sensors. So for Sensors, we have three abilities. First up is Envenomation. All your attacks deal 25% less base damage, however, you gain 25% increased venom or toxin damage. Well, that depends on the ability of your height, which I'm going to go through later. Next up is Mud Block, which while covered in mud, you gain a 50% bleed, bone break, venom, and poison healing. Basically, you just have 50% increase of any other status effect in the game. Last one is spike gathering. Use when uh, this is used when you have a party. This increases reflect damage by 10% for each Stegosaurus, Miragaya, and Kentrosaurus in your group within a 50 meter radius. Stacks up to five times, and you also gain immunity to reflect damage from your group mates. So this is really really important as it allows you to sometimes accidentally hit each other without getting you know venom or toxin into your stream or into your character. So yeah, all these are pretty standard. Next up is uh, metabolism where it's just you know herbivore and forager as per usual for every other herbivore. Next up is height. Height is where it gets a little bit more interesting. First up is Muddy Scales. Muddy Scales, the description reads, Activate to roll in dirt. Cover yourself with mud. Gain up to 50% increased armor based on the amount of mud currently applied. Activate multiple times to apply more mud. Mud will wash off in water or rain. Cannot be used in combat. Additionally, gain 50% paralysis damage while this height is equipped. I'll be showcasing all of the abilities a little bit later, but now I'll be just uh, you know, reading out all of it. Next up is Toxic Barbs. Inflict Toxin Damage to enemies that attack you. Also applies Toxin Damage to all your tail base attack. Your opponent will die if their health drops below the Toxin level, up to 20% of their maximum health. So to explain how this ability works, it's basically each time your enemies or attack you or you hit your enemies while Toxic Barbs is equipped, they will gain a level of Toxin if I am correct, Toxin does not, it's not a damage over time, it's not a dot effect, a damage over time effect on 
your enemies. Rather, it will start building a bar that probably the guy can see. And once your the guy's HP is below that particular bar, he will immediately die. And it's up to 20% of the maximum health. So to put in perspective, you just have to deal 80% damage to the guy and he'll probably just die. Think of it like an execute. And last of all is Venomous Spine. Inflict Venom damage to enemies that attack you. Also apply Venom damage to all your tail based attack. Venom dramatically reduces stamina recovery rate. Also it's just a standard Venom. Now for legs, we have Kicked On. Not that kind of kick. Shut the hell up, Inter the internet has ruined you. Kicked On is your mud effects will persist three times longer when wet. From my understanding, uh, based on the description, is that there is a certain period of time where the armor will be reduced. With Kicked On, it will last longer even when it's raining. That's my understanding from it. Next up is Counter Turn. Upon entering combat, gain 50% increased turning speed for 20 seconds. Has a 3 minute cooldown, but does not cooldown while in combat. Uh, what that means is, uh, once the combat starts, you have 20 seconds with 50% increased turning speed. And once that, uh, that timing is over, it will go into a 3 minute cooldown. However, if you are still in the fight, or you still have uh, in the combat debuff, that cooldown will not start. And lastly is Strong Legs, where you take 40% less knockback and 50% increased bone breaking heal. Next up is Back Limbs. This is particularly interesting. You don't have one ability called Lash. Flail your tail aggressively, knocking back all enemies behind you for medium damage and applying Venom or Toxin depending on the equip height ability. This is particularly interesting, but it has a weird syner not synergy, it has a weird cooldown sharing thing with a particular tail attack that I'll show off later. And lastly, the meat of all Stegosaurids, the tail. So first up is this, Detonate. Detonate uh, is a tail attack that uh, converts all Venom or Toxin status effect on the enemy into instant raw damage. If there are no Venom or Toxin effects on enemy, it instead only deals very low damage. So this particular ability probably requires more people to test it out because it's a little bit weird in terms of the description. Because they say that it converts all Venom and Toxin status effect on the enemy into instant raw damage. But what does that mean? Does it mean that, uh, it, for example, if let's say the guy has the toxin at maximum, like the 20% uh, health toxin thing, and I detonate it, will that deal as much damage as when if it's at 10%, is at 1%? And for the Venom effect, if let's say the guy has 10 seconds left on his uh, Venom effect, and another guy has 2 minutes on his Venom effect, and I convert it into raw damage, does it stack? Like, is the 10% is like the 10 second one deal less damage than the 2 minute one, or is it both the same? And the last most important question, especially with multiplayer, if a Megalania bites the guy and I detonate it, does that particular Venom also uh, affect it? Or is it only Venom and Toxin from me, myself, and the no other creature can affect it? So, all these are uh, very weird question very important question when you try to you know make how to, when you try to synergize this ability with other creatures abilities or existing abilities so it's actually very very interesting and also very weird in terms of the synergy so if all of you can just or any of you who plays a game uh, can try it out with your friends go ahead i don't really have much friends to play this game with anyway next up is tail attack is a is automatically unlocked and is a medium damaging tail attack that also applies venom or toxin depending on the equipped height ability. The direction of the tail swing depends on the camera aim. Uh, basically, I think all of the stegosaurus are going to have this particular ability. In fact, I think all or even the ankylosaurus might have this ability to where uh you know, the tail swing will depend on the camera angle that you're facing. Next up is Tail Barrage, a low damaging tail attack that swings 3 times consecutively with a wide range, applies more stacks of Venom or Toxin for every hit, depending on the uh, equipped high ability. Basically, this is for anyone who wants to play the more Toxin or Venom build rather than uh, the damage build. 
And lastly is Tail Swing, a charge up attack and inflict which inflicts more venom or toxin based on how long it is held, depending on your equip height ability. A standard tail attack for every uh tail weapon weaponized tail creature. Now let's go through all of these abilities one by one. Okay, first up is the tail swing attack. I need a brighter spot because my skin is a bit on the darker side. Okay, here should work. So tail attack is standard, just a simple tail attack. As a 2 second cooldown after activating it. However, as you can tell, this tail attack does not uh, put your other tails into cooldown. Like for example, the detonate here. Does that... It looks impressive, a lot of damage, but it actually doesn't do much damage. And it does not put any of your other skills into cooldown, as you can tell. So you can just keep swinging happily. And also, based on the direction you're facing, you will do it. But if you're not facing any direction, you will just swing like that. Next up is the mud armor. So while using mud armor, you just you know roll on the floor, and a certain bar will just start increasing. And as you put more and more mud armor on, you will get progressively more and more muddy. I'm just gonna put on more mud armor until I'm like reach hundred percent. Give me a moment. As you can see, while the more mud armor you put on, the more you know dirty you look, I guess. And once you reach 100% uh, mud armor, you look like as though you just jump into mud and emerge from it. Fine enough, those spines on your back, or rather those feather spines on your back, no mud on it. The spines have mud, those feathers, no mud. So yeah, this is how it looks like once you have 100% mud armor. But if I'm not wrong, your speed and stuff aren't affected, so you can basically just wear the mud armor with no diminishing effects. And this is just a this is just something that I found out that is very stupid. If you're wearing full mud armor and you I change my abilities like so, you're already thinking, oh, once you change out of change out of mud armor, you should not be you know doesn't have any you shouldn't have any other like once you change it out of it, your mud armor should disappear, right? No, the mud armor stays. So if you want to make it, uh, you want to do it, you can actually just go inside your cave, switch to mud armor, go outside your cave, roll around in the dirt for a bit, go back in the cave, change back to your toxic or venom bug, whichever you like, and walk out with full mud armor and also toxin, which is very stupid, I feel. Like, holy hell, this is amazing. Next up is the spit, which is like that. It's like a llama spit. However, this spit has a... Uh, long cooldown so it's it's like a one minute cooldown so you can't just keep spitting until the guy uh, has permanent 15 percent reduction all the time unless you're playing with another mira guy yeah. then if that's the case just take the spitting on the guy and he will probably not do any much damage to you and the next ability is a lash lash uh, to put a reminder is not a tail ability it, but it's a back limb ability and this is how it works Yes, this is probably the first time a dinosaur with a tail as a weapon is able to s swing and hit things in front of it without biting. So this is particularly amazing to be honest. And just it's just very fun. I like, just it looks very fun to use, honestly. Like imagine the mirror guy just running towards you and you just think, oh okay, his tail is probably not gonna do anything because I just need to stay in front of it, right? Nope. And he can just start swinging you as, again, this particular lash attack and the tail attack has different cooldown. Now, next up on its abilities, I it's going to be a bit weird because I don't know why they put these together. Like, honestly, I don't know why they put uh, these two cooldowns together, but I'll show you now. So, first up is uh, the charge up wide attack. Based on the direction you're facing, it will charge up in this particular direction and swing similar to both the stegosaurus and the kentrosaurus and if i'm facing this particular direction yep, yep. it will swing in this direction too now next up is the tail barrage which looks like this and as you can tell the tail barrage goes on cooldown the lash also goes on cooldown and vice versa, if the lash goes on cooldown, the tail barrage also goes on cooldown. This is 
a bit weird, but I think I have a reason. I can think of a reason of why they did that. Cause can you imagine if you run at someone, you do a lash, and you immediately do a tail barrage on the guy, and how much venom you will inflict on the person. So I think this is more of a balancing issue because it might be a bit too strong. And yeah, that's all of the abilities that the Mira Gaia has. And I shall tell you some personal thoughts on like maybe a certain build that you can try. So first up is this particular build. Uh, I call this the Venom or Toxin build, depending on which height you pick. Uh, both, both will probably work on it. Where uh, you... All the other slots, like the hit slots, they have no differences, the back lane has no differences, but the sensors will be envenomation, which you deal less damage, however, you have increased toxin damage, which is the main purpose of this build, where you just need to apply as much toxin or as much venom as possible with the you know counter turns and stuff like that. And most importantly, the back limb with detonate and tail and tail barrage. Because just a quick reminder, only Lash and Tail Barrage have the Shack cooldown, Detonate does not. So you can use Lash, like for example, you can just do this. Like, you can just run at someone, Lash, and immediately use your Tail Slam and detonate as much damage as you can onto the guy. So this is the Venom or Toxin playstyle, a much more active playstyle I would say. Next up is this, uh, the Mud or Mud Slime Paralysis build, where you focus mainly on applying your paralysis. Like, yes, you don't really, you can't really apply your Toxic or Venom Bud, but this will help you increase just basically escaping. This build is more of an escaping build rather than a fighting build, but if you can apply the paralysis, why not take the chance and beat the shit out of the guy? And with this build, uh, you basically have much more armor and you have increased bleed, bone break, venom, and poison healing. You have you can just apply your muddy skill whenever you're out of combat, so you don't have to keep running back to your base to re change to reapply it. And because with the uh, muddy skills, you can actually gain a 50% increased paralysis while this height is equipped. So yes, only when this height is equipped, you have increased paralysis damage. Meaning that when you change to another height like the Toxic Barb, you do keep the armor on for the, from the Mud Armor, but you do not gain the 50% increased paralysis, paralysis damage. Then for the legs, you have Kicked On so that even if you're going through water, you'll still um, not melt, the Mud won't melt off as fast. Back limbs, Lash because that's the best thing in the game, that's the best thing on this guy's ability thus far. And for the basic, for the attack, we'll have the basic Tail Attack with the tail swing attack because these two are not to apply venom but to apply damage pure damage and last of all is what i want to call a come something like a hybrid build like this build here where you uh try to you can these are interchangeable you can either be on envenomation or mud block but if you're in the group spike gathering is always the best for height wise uh the best is to have toxin or venom spines after you apply your mud armor on yourself. So you gain the benefit of mud armor, basically reduce damage, along with the benefits of toxic buffs and or venom spines. And for the back limb against the this is lash. For legs wise, a strong leg where you receive less knockback and more bone break healing. But if you want to be on the more offensive side, you can go for counter turn. And for the tail wise, is to just dish out as much venom and damage as possible so you have tail barrage to consecutively keep slapping the guy to apply more venom and toxin while you have your standard tail attack to just keep co doing consistent damage as much as possible and yeah that's it for the mirror guy actually and uh, honestly in my thoughts this is a very powerful creature <laughs> it feels very powerful with all the abilities that it has it can be played solo where you can just you know, par either paralyze and let the guy run and um, run away, or paralyze and take the opportunity to hit the guy, or you can go on the offense with the toxin build and try to kill as much as possible, especially with the execute toxin that it has, which is very very interesting. And I really like it a lot. Hopefully, more creatures in the future will have this kind of abilities, special abilities, and special niche that it goes into. 
And with that being said, the, I will end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will be probably recording myself playing this and uh, uploading the videos as and when. And I'm very excited to actually play this creature. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. That's in Kasu, and I hope to see all of you in the next video or stream. Bye, come say bye. Loud. Alright, bye.